In a mining town at the turn of the century, you would have heard the stamp mill for miles around. It was a deafening sound. And today, if you stand in Skidoo, all you really hear is silence. And you can sit and think in that silence about how life may have been here over a hundred years ago. You can look at the stamp mill and imagine what it may have sounded like. You can rummage through some of the old broken bottles or tin cans that were left behind and try and imagine what those would have held or who would have discarded them. And this place is really interesting to do that with. And these are really important things for us to be able to continue to study and look at and remember. Death Valley's history is really tied into mining, and it's a very different way of life than I think we experience today. So being in Death Valley or being in a place like Skidoo really gives you kind of a window into a bygone era. Many people have come through Death Valley looking for riches and trying to strike it big. Most of these people ended up failing. Some places though did actually thrive in Death Valley, and Skidoo is kind of one of those places. It ended up turning a profit, which is not what quite a few of the mining operations in this area did. In 1906, there were two men that discovered it and very quickly sold it to a man named Bob Montgomery. He over-speculated the town and really thought that this place would, would last and become a very large mining community for the area. There were tent cities that sprung up in the area and hundreds of people, miners and workers, came to be here and to be at Skidoo and work this mine. And it really didn't last very long. The post office was put in place here in 1907. And then by 1908, pretty much everything had folded in this town. There isn't much left of the town site at Skidoo, but the stamp mill is pretty spectacular. It's one of my favorite places in the park that has mine resources. The stamp mill is where they crushed the ore and were able to do some of the extraction so that they could actually extract that gold. Skidoo was either the biggest or the second biggest gold mine in Death Valley, uh, Keen Wonder being the other. Production-wise, probably the biggest. And the Skidoo mill is one of the best preserved in all the Mojave Desert and was one of the few that was actually powered with water. So you'll notice the mill is built onto the side of a steep hill. This is actually fairly common for milling operation. And the reason is a lot of times the milling process involves multiple steps. And when you build on the side of a hill, you can line up all your equipment in sequence and then use gravity to move the ore from one section to the next. So here we are at the top where ore is first introduced to the mill. And we have a platform and a large ore bin. Now originally, ore was transported to the mill via wagon. However, in the 1930s, when Skidoo was mined for the second time, um, dump trucks were used. And this structure actually was built in the 30s it's sturdier, it was made to accommodate the larger loads. So here we are, we're now at the bottom of the ore bin, um, and we're at the start of the milling process. So this piece of equipment right here is known as a jaw crusher. And your first, the first step in milling is to break the ore down. The ore comes out of the bin, goes in the crusher, gets reduced in size, and then is fed along a conveyor belt that's no longer present down into a second ore bin above the stamp mill. After going through the jaw crusher, the ore goes on the conveyor belt down to the second ore bin, and then is fed down here to the stamps. There are 15 stamps, and these would alternate. They would go up and down, be dropped onto the ore, and they'd pulverize it into sand. And all this was powered with water from the Skidoo pipeline. So these going up and down, you have metal banging on rock, making a tremendous noise. And this is all enclosed inside a metal building. 
The stamp mill workers were some of the best paid workers on the site, but part of the trade-off was that most of them went deaf within a few years. In fact, it was so loud inside these mills that they would have to communicate with hand signals. The action from the stamps was so violent that in many mills, including this one, the stamps were put on their own foundation so that they didn't shake apart the whole building. So after the ore is pulverized from the stamps, it comes over and comes down over these amalgamation tables. These tables would have looked a bit different when they were in production because they would have been covered with copper plates and the copper plates would have been brushed with mercury. The purpose of crushing the ore is to separate the gold from the rest of the material. After going through the stamps, the gold that had been separated, which is known as free gold, would come down onto these plates and would bond with the mercury and would form amalgam, which is essentially a paste. And once enough gold had gone over and you had enough amalgam, it was saturated basically. Someone would come along, scrape it off, and then brush more mercury onto the plates. For the gold that was still attached to other material, it would continue on down to the next level, cyanide processing. Now these cyanide tanks would all have been filled with sodium cyanide solution. And the ore would have been put in them for a number of days, long enough for the gold to be separated from the rest of the material. Um, the gold would bond to the solution. And then eventually for recovery, the, what's known as the pregnant solution, would be removed and run through a box of zinc shavings. And then after all that work, the miners finally had their gold. The Skidoo Mill is very fragile, and it's important to remember that you should never climb on this or any other historic structure. Not only is it dangerous, but it's also against park regulations. And of course, anytime you're in a national park, leave everything as you found it. Don't, don't take anything from the site, natural or mining related. One of the things I'd like to stress is that when people visit these sites, they shouldn't be going into the mines. You know, we have a motto, stay out, stay alive, and it's for good reason. I really enjoy going to mine sites, especially in Death Valley. It really gives me a connection to the past. It gives me a connection to this place. And whether a thousand people have seen it before or I was the first person to have seen it in a hundred years, it still feels like I'm discovering something by coming to these places and by looking at these things and by touching something that someone might not have touched for well over a hundred years. It's really kind of a powerful thing to feel like you're discovering something. And especially in Death Valley, I feel like there's a lot to discover.